Has anyone else noticed the lack of femininity in games? It seems like there exists within Western culture a general disdain for female characters being presented in a traditional fashion. Now, my meaning of traditional is not to be confused with sexualized. There's a clear distinction here, though the topic of female sexualization in games is a topic I hope to cover in a future video. What I'm implying here is that traditionally agreeable, passive, or even submissive behavior is demonized, specifically when applied to female characters. Today, what's considered an ideal heroine within the mainstream has to be the next walking Terminator, shaking off her daily traumas with a fearsome scowl and shedding her vulnerability in favor of a sharp tongue. A woman that dares to break the societal norm while outperforming all of the surrounding male species, operating under the assumption that losing to men is to lose one's entire meaning in life. This is what reaches the headlines and is shipped to the idealistically reflective masses. And this is also what I actively object to as it increasingly becomes the expected norm. Because these types of female characters are often not actually characters at all. They are, in many instances, flat, two-dimensional vehicles of death, written without a noteworthy personality, but all the same, they carry the writer's social messaging. If I used Abby from The Last of Us 2 as an example, I'd do so without ever making her large frame and bulky muscles a point of contention. You see, I don't dislike Abby's physical appearance, I dislike her personality and behaviors towards the characters around her. Abby is an extremely angry and self-serving individual. This is a result of her obsession with revenge, having had her father violently killed. A vengeful motivation that leads her to beat a man to death with a golf club. <laughs> A revenge-stricken Abby is certainly no one to empathize with, but what about her life before? A younger, less traumatized Abby could be more likable, except that she's not. Whenever the game's depiction of a young Abby sets in, so too does it paint the picture of a snarky, annoyed, and disinterested girl. One who the men around her either have to apologetically tiptoe around, She's due any day now. We'll just check on her and then, and then we'll head back. I promise or parade themselves to extreme lengths just to prompt a positive reaction from her. And look at this view with me. I can't miss training. I don't think I can live like this anymore, Abby. Owen, I'm serious. I will break up with you. Owen. I always love you. <laughs> There's very little that's feminine or even particularly likable about Abby's nature. This is made exceedingly clear even during her redemption arc of the story, where she risks her life to protect a pair of siblings. The same arc where she brutally massacres the very group that helped raise her. Abby pays no heed to those she once lived and trained with, as they cry out her name in agonizing dismay. Abby? The same way she never displays remorse for the revenge kill served cold with a golf club. I list Abby as an example because she is in fact one of the protagonists of The Last of Us 2. A protagonist that Naughty Dog seems to have tried very hard to get audiences to favor, though overwhelmingly failed at the task judging by the negative reaction to her character's inclusion. It's not difficult to see why they failed in this endeavor, in their pursuit of creating such a strong-willed and independent reflection of modern society, they've forgotten that they were creating a character at all, much less a female one. And this is one of the failures in many Western video game stories today. Yes, Western video game stories, though Japanese developers tend to skew on one end of the spectrum by displaying female characters as meeker than their male counterparts, Western developers' interpretation of females can range as far as ignoring gender-based vulnerabilities entirely. No visible muscular density? No worries, she'll easily topple her foes. Nearly a full-term pregnancy? Won't impact her combat performance in the slightest. Not even the lethal bullets whizzing by are a threat to the unborn born child. And there goes most of your compelling character growth out of the window. Because when you downplay the fact that your character is a female, if not downright forget about it, then you've not only committed a disservice to your character, but also to women in general. Now, I believe that achieving a healthy balance is always important when writing a character. You don't want a character who is too weak to the point of always needing to be saved. You also don't want a character so strong that they never need assistance. 
A perpetual female victim is not appealing, in the same manner that a Mary Sue isn't appealing either. Having said that, I'm now gonna contradict myself, if I haven't already. Both sides of the fence are bad, but one is far more advantageous for a woman to land on. If I describe the stoic character that is powerful and able to tackle issues head on, I'd assume most people would picture a male first and foremost and there be biological reasons as to why that is. To complement this, an emotionally open yet physically vulnerable character would be presumed female. Again, biological stereotypes. If a woman were to land on the opposing extremity, decide placing her as the stoic and powerful character, she'd have one hell of an uphill battle ahead of her, one where none of her more advantageous biological stereotypes are utilized, thus requiring significant writing room effort to compensate. Simply put, if someone has long legs, they have an advantage in many sports. If someone is a woman, they have an advantage in society at soliciting emotional responses from others that men simply do not have. Imagine this, Kratos from God of War. He's a badass to put things simply. When people think Kratos, they think God Killer. If Kratos suddenly decides to put makeup on that brutal scar of his and adopted a more welcoming personality, things would be awkward to say the least. Say we took away his ability to even kill gods. He's as weak as Superman in the presence of Kryptonite right now. He wouldn't be such a fan favorite character now, would he? Could it work? Sure, anything can. But we've now removed all of the typical machismo associated with this male character. A male character that is up to this point received favor for being stereotypically hyper-masculine. Trying to make him more vulnerable, physically and emotionally, would be working against all of his natural biological advantages. Images. The same applies to female characters when portrayed absently of vulnerability. Laura Croft, as featured in the Tomb Raider reboots, can be seen as the perfect example of these advantages being both utilized as well as wasted. Tomb Raider's 2013 reboot gave to us a version of Laura Croft less so seen as an object of beauty, but instead focused more on Laura's struggle against her environment, a normal, innocent girl surviving the elements, overcoming nature as well as the brutality of the men around her. It was a compelling story and it showcased a natural growth to her character by placing Lara Croft's vulnerabilities front and center. Which works because it highlights the fact, even more so, that she is a woman tackling any and all odds against her. Then we have the arguably more generic sequels. Lara Croft has already become an instrument of death with zero remorse for her brutal actions. She struggles far less and survival is further separated from any tangible form of character development. Lara takes the role of any standard male character, stoic and engaging her conflicts with unflinching confidence having all focus taken away from her as a woman in favor of blandly expositing narrative dialogue. I led them to it, Jonah. The divine source is real. We've got to find it first. Thus, we have an experience far less impactful across these sequels, especially when viewed in comparison with the original 2013 title, further displaying the importance of considering the advantages of each sex, and if these advantages aren't being utilized, then they absolutely must be replaced with something of much more substance. To begin to wrap things up here, these are all just my subjective opinions and views of femininity, the sexes, as well as their relation to each other. I'm not some dude going around saying that women need to be in a kitchen, or that men always need to be the breadwinners. I can only point out that there is indeed a massive divide in how western culture portrays females compared to how other cultures do, and that this implied empowerment to females by portraying their characters in much the same way that we portray males isn't necessarily the best option in every situation. This is Rage Watch, and thanks for listening to me ramble.